What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning into my channel, Jason's Own World. Still checking in, working on the GTI over here. The motor seized up, and I'm just doing some preventative measures to check while I'm here, like the easy stuff. Um, I just did the starter, as you guys could see in a previous video, and it was not the starter. And now uh, today I am just draining the oil and checking the oil pan. So I'm draining the oil and then I'm going to remove the oil pan and see what I found. And I found something, guys. I found something. I haven't taken the timing chain covers off yet because there's no need to do that yet until I drain the oil. And if that was going to be okay, then I would have, the next thing I would have done was a leak down test to make sure that the valves are seated and that the valves are bent or anything like that. So those are the two preventative measures that I was going to take before I went and did the timing chain covers. And when I drained the oil and removed the oil pan underneath the car, I 100% found something. Let me show you. When I went to drain the oil underneath the car, as you can see, it's dripping because I have the oil pan off now. I immediately saw coolant come out of the oil, guys. Coolant came out of the oil. That's a big sign. Most likely blown head gasket, right? But the weird thing was that I did not see any sludge or anything like that in my oil or even my oil filter when I told you that I accidentally started the car with my oil filter off. So when the oil pumped on the ground, I didn't really notice any coolant in that oil, which was really weird. So this is the weird thing. Most likely I'm gonna have a blown head gasket, but was that blown head gasket due to my own fault for not putting on the oil filter when I tried starting the car? Or was that gasket gonna blow any time soon? I do not know. But I did find coolant in the oil. So come around here, check out the oil pan guys. All the sludge, that's coolant mixing with the oil. Milky, milky way, milky, milky way. So when coolant mixes with oil and turns into this milky stuff, that's what it looks like uh, when the coolant mixes with, with the oil. This is a bad sign for the engine, but a really good sign for me because though I just found this coolant in the oil now, now I know that most likely the engine has to be completely taken apart because there are things internally damaged inside the engine. But the good thing is also I do not see any, like there's no metal in the oil pan whatsoever. I even checked the filter with the pickup tube and everything. There's no metal shavings in there. There's like, there's no met signs of metal anywhere. So it's just odd that um, I definitely have coolant mixing with the oil. But was that due to me uh, not putting the oil filter on when I started the car? Or was this already happening before I started the car? I do not know. I do not know. I think at this point, it's really going to be a mystery. Um, I mean, this more than likely could have been happening before I even did the fuel injector and the carbon cleaning job on my car. Uh, but I didn't notice anything because I wasn't losing any coolant and the engine was running just fine with a little bit of like fueling stuff. As I smell it here, it does have a little bit of a... Uh, fuel odor to it, which I knew that was happening because I could smell it on the dipstick when I was checking the oil. So, you know, maybe it was like oil mixing with fuel and then the coolant mixing with the the oil all at the same time. And this is the, the effect here. So what is going to happen now? 
Well, I, I really don't know at this point. It's a good thing that I see this in the oil because if I didn't find anything in the oil and then I was going to do a leak down test and if I didn't find anything wrong with the valves, like if it wasn't leaking down, then I was going to say, you know, this probably really good chance, 99% sure that it's a timing or a balance shaft issue. But now that I'm finding cooling in the oil pan, I know that there's something internal going on and I don't know if anything else on the bottom end or on the top end, but even on the bottom end because the crank is on the bottom, right? And it's seized. If there's anything going on the bottom end internally, then that's something that is just gonna cost so much money. Rebuild costs for this car are crazy. So I don't really want to venture into that. So it's a good thing that I found cooling in the, in the oil because now I'm basically going to say bye-bye, bye-bye to this engine. Uh, 183,000 miles and change, guys. I was really hoping to make it to 200,000 miles on it. It's been tuned its entire life. I mean, since 2,000 miles. I went first stage one, then I went stage one and a half, then I went stage two on all OTS files. And then from there, I did turbo upgrades and I went custom tuning and then I did meth. And it's been through a lot its entire life, but it's been pushing well over double the factory horsepower for a good five or six years now. And so, and it, and it gets driven a lot. It doesn't get beat on probably as much as everyone else beats on it, but I do drive it hard a few times every day, redline it quite often. And I drive it a lot through city traffic and stuff. So it's been through a lot. It's been through a lot. As you guys know, following my channel, it's been through a lot. But I just don't want to really put the money into this old motor because there's so many parts. Even if I did, you know, all the internal stuff, which would cost me thousands of dollars, there would still be other things on this car that are old regarding the engine stuff. So I'm just going to scrap that idea of rebuilding this motor because it's just too old of a motor for me to want to do that. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be most likely be uh, looking for a used motor. And the reason why I'm looking for a used motor Instead of, uh, I know some of you talked about the Alibaba version and turning it up. Well, I don't really have any plans to turn this car up. I was perfectly fine with the IS-38. I thought the power was great. It was still fun, um, uh, especially on the water meth injection. And, you know, it just had plenty of power, but it had great drivability too. It would, it would boost before 3,000 RPMs. Like if I went hybrid, IS-38, then I'm losing a bit of drivability and there's still a possibility that things are going to go wrong, you know. So IS-38 is a perfect, in my opinion, upgrade for this car because it's an OEM turbo. You're not pushing crazy power levels to where the engine is going to fail because of the power you're putting in, into it. And uh, yeah, so I really didn't ever have any plan to, you know build this motor up to get it high horsepower. There was no plan with that. Um, so the Alibaba engine, even though I can source one for $1,500, $2,000 for a brand new long block, um, I would still have to use a bunch of my really old components unless I bought, you know, bought new stuff. So it's just one of those things where, you know, even though the Alibaba engine is brand new, I would probably have to put at least another thousand dollars into other things, you know, just to make it clean and, and functioning well. Whereas if I bought a used engine and if I could finally like down the road, find one that was like 4,000 bucks, but it comes with all the accessories like the intake manifold, fuel pump, Timing chain covers are on there already, oil pan, all that stuff is on there, like the wiring harness, the fuel injectors, all that stuff is attached to it. And if I found one for like $4,000 to $5,000, well, 
with low miles, like 30 to 40,000 miles. And then the seller shows me that it's, it's having compression, like there's nothing wrong with the compression or anything like that, then that's worth it more to me. That would be a much better value for the car, just swapping motor to motor. And all you're doing is taking an engine out and putting a new one back in. So um, that, that sounds like the better idea for me. And I think that's the route that I'm going to go. Another reason why I don't want to go the Alibaba uh, engine way is because I have been reading the forums that people have made, the threads online that those who have bought Alibaba engines, and there are some people that are having issues, some are having non-issues. But in general, some of those guys have bought multiple of those engines because their first one like died or something went wrong within 20 to 30,000 miles. And I just don't want to take that risk of only having 20 or 30,000 mile car being able to drive. You know, that's not many miles at all. I want something that I know is going to last me for another three, four, five, six plus years is what I'm saying. So that's another reason why. Oh, and also people have been getting those Alibaba motors and taking them apart and it seems like whoever's whoever whatever sellers with with these alibaba motors are doing they're they're taking parts from all over the place from different cars and piecing the the motor together with all these different parts that really don't belong in the engine and so it's just the reliability factor for me is just not there and that is the reason why i'm very hesitant to go the Alibaba engine route. But um, going back to this, we know this is happening. We know it's something internal or this would not happen. So this is a good thing. It's a bummer that it is what it is, but it's a good thing because I honestly think it's gonna save me money in the long run. Because even if I did a timing chain and a balance shaft and none of this was happening, right? And I did a timing chain and a balance shaft, what if something blew up? What if this happened? a mile later after I did all that stuff. Now the motor's down again and I just spent a crap ton of money. And so it's an old motor. That's that's just what's gonna happen with an old motor, guys. It's just what's gonna happen. So that is what's going on with the car, guys. Um, go ahead and send me some comments on what you think, what you think you would do if this was you, right? If If my position was your position right now, what would you do? Um, it seems like everything's expensive. If you have any other ideas, I'm more than welcome and open to any other ideas. But as of right now, that's what's happening with the car. So, all right. Well, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you like it. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for your likes, your dislikes, your subscriptions and viewing all my channel and sharing with others. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't and uh, hit that notification bell for future videos. We still got more videos coming. I got some videos I'm doing on the Ford C-Max and then, you know, I'll be doing other videos on, on this as time goes. So I will definitely keep you in the loop. But um, yeah, it's just gonna take a while. I appreciate all that you guys have done for me in this channel. But until the next video, guys, peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.